Um, another thing that, as far as technique goes, um, when I'm playing chords, I'm always using the claw style. So, um, I'm always using finger style. I find that finger style, as far as just clawing chords, gives you that precision of, of voicings that you need. And you can arpeggiate things. Um, so it gives you a nice uh, variety like that. Um, to do that with pick would be really, really tough. But anyway, it keeps my, I like a real clean, crisp type of comping situation. Exercises that can really help right hand technique. Um, <clears throat> we have um, one technique is simply to use all up picks. So the idea is to grab a chord, I would do something that's not a bar chord, just some kind of a chord that sounds nice. And then we want to take all adjacent strings, so the first and second string. Then go to the next two strings and go through all the, the adjacent string combinations. Then we go back and do the same, thr same thing, uh, skipping a string. So now the first and third strings. Next two. If you can learn to put this aside and simply accept the way you feel, however it is you feel, you automatically have a better chance of playing well at, at that gig or concert. Uh, and I think that's something that. Um, that pros do, and um, anybody, not just music, but life is life, health is health, things happen, but we still have to do X, Y, and Z. Rather than fight it, accept it, which causes you to chill out and set it aside, enabling you to, to go forward in a really positive fashion. So don't get caught in that trap of thinking, no, oh, I don't feel well, so I'm going to play hardly. So here's some tips for sight reading. What I would say is, when you're first giving something to sight read, the first thing you want to do is simply check out the key uh, time signature in a tempo. I mean, it just gives you a general, okay, I mean, the key of E flat, um, you know, quarter note equals 132, um, et cetera. The next thing you want to do is determine, you know, what position of the neck do you want to play in. And what you want to do there is just scan the page and just look on the music. What's my lowest note there? What's the highest note? And that will give you your general uh, frame of reference as far as where you want to be on the neck. Next thing you want to do is scan the music for any dense areas, you know, a lot of, a lot of notes. Like here, maybe you have a little melodic line, here's some chords that you're playing, but oh, here's like this two measure lick that you have to nail with the band and it's a killer lick. It's like black page all over again, right? So you want to take a look at that and try to figure out what that is right away before you have to jump in. And that way, at least when you get to that point in the music, you're not going to be t totally caught off guard. This segment is on uh, the journey, as it were. Um, being a musician uh, is definitely a journey. Um, I tell my students all the time to enjoy the journey because it's all about the now, the process of being a musician and becoming a better musician. Um, I think there's too much attention uh, that paid to the idea of some ending point um, when we're studying the guitar and learning how to play the, the guitar. We're thinking, well, you know, 15 years down the road, I'm going to be such and such, and so you're living for 15 years down the road. Where it's really about the journey, you know, and, and um, the journey never ends, and it's it's a constant um, positive uh, thing that is unfolding, and it's really important to enjoy every moment every day. To me that's where the fun is. It's it's not like okay well 20 years from now I'm going to be really happy which is what I used to think many years ago. 20 years from now I'm going to be so good I'm going to be so happy. Well, ha what you know then you get into the whole happiness thing so what's happiness and how do you define